that there is no ugly manga style. Change my mind. Well, there's nothing really to argue about when you look at wonderfully ornamented clothes of a certain bride, or French executioners whose hair is as epic as the history itself, or amazingly detailed character design full of pure weltschmerz. Everything gets more interesting with Asumiko Nakamura's almost fluid style, one's caricatural drawings, or Shinobu Kaitani's specific simplicity. Although all these styles completely differ from each other, I appreciate every one of them. They add a unique flavor to a story, which for me is actually more important. Like, I can cry over a sad comics drawn in paint on Windows 95, but even the prettiest spreads won't fill the plot holes which plague my heart. And that's how it's always been for me. That's my ninja, my ninja way. However, I've recently come across mangas, which I read not for plot, not even for the plot, but mostly for the visuals. Well done now, Tsukiji. How am I to become a Hokage now, hmm? This dream-destroying mangaka wrote two single volumes of short stories, Kinyiro Kishi, which I don't really recommend, Haikyo Shoujo, which I really recommend, and right now, yes, as we speak, he's drawing manga series Atekan, which you must read if you're into nasty. But not just some nasty, I mean <laughs> nasty, nasty. We will talk about this later. Tsukiji's art style can be described by two words, abundance and beauty. Tired of unattainable beauty standards? Well then fasten your belts, cause we'll have a great ride with the most charming character designs ever. Both male and female protagonists have usually alluring doll-like faces and slender, elongated figures. Women especially are drawn with heavily stylized haircuts and complicated dresses with a plethora of layers and ornaments. In his stories the mangaka mixes traditional Japanese, Chinese, Mongolian, etc clothing, with Victorianesque European fashion with fancy corsets, collars and shoes, of course making it even more extra. Similarly to women, men's clothing is inspired by Asian and European fashion with a bit of good-looking steampunk. However, what you can sadly notice, Tsukiji used so much fabric on women's dresses that there's not enough for some male protagonists. Yes, that's exactly what happened here. This leads to another conclusion. Both more masculine and feminine characters have one thing in common. Abs. I mean, if you don't have abs, then what are you even doing in Naotsukiji's manga? Oh, you're a comic relief. That's what I thought. Damn! Additionally, Male characters in Adekan are drawn in very sensual poses, for example Jojo poses. Yes, we have Jojo poses, it's humor, very nice, big pee, -pee energy, literally sometimes. But yeah, very sensual poses which actually give me back pain just from looking at them. I mean, that's not how your spine works, you know. Am I right, spine? How do you work? Well, right now I work remotely. Oh, uh, okay, so maybe I'm in the wrong here. I really appreciate now Tsukiji for choosing stories, characters and locations fitting for her art style. For example, the mangaka often uses places such as ruins or landfill sites and explores professions like taxidermist, sculpture, diorama maker, umbrella maker, mermaid actress. In other words, a vast array of motifs which have potential to be drawn beautifully. Tsukiji easily exaggerates the visuals, making compositions as mesmerizing as possible. Sometimes she makes allusions to classical paintings with mythological creatures and naked goddesses, so a page can look like a ceiling of Sistine Chapel. Sometimes she creates oneric images of characters' dreams and visions, and sometimes there's Salvador Dali. To underline the connection to paintings, the author draws borders of panels as picture frames, often of unconventional round shapes. 
This gives us possibility to look at panels as individual images, making the plots irrelevant, at least for a moment. And everything is beautiful, and there's a lot of it. But why is there the Gothic in the title, you may ask? First things first, Tsukiji's writing leaves something to be desired. Sometimes with doll-like characters comes doll-like personality. Some stories have pretty and convincing plot or meek endings, and the author even uses toki no jutsu. Oh no. Nevertheless, her work is entertaining and we can see a sparkle here and there. I believe instead of going into shonen shoujo aesthetic, she should find inspirations in fairy tales like uh, she did in Haikyo shoujo and gothic literature. No, not the normal gothic. I mean gothic like the one created by Edgar Allan Poe himself. And she actually takes from it in a decan. The manga has a form of short stories which are connected through characters of Shiro, mysterious umbrella maker, and Kojiro, a police officer. But first, let's acknowledge the elephant in the room. This manga is one big hashtag no homo with tons of shameless fan service. However, it has something more to offer. I will show you. Let's uncover this. Oh, um, uh, maybe if I turn this up. Yes, here we go. Some of my favorite chapters listed here show that Tsukiji can actually do better. Let's have a closer look at one of them, the two Benika. One day a genius singer and composer, Orochiya Benika, met her imitator, Matsuko. Being bored with celebrity status, like we all are, she made a deal with the girl. She would focus on creating songs while Matsuko would perform on stage as Benika. What could go wrong? As the girl indulged herself with luxury and attention, Benika, composing for hours in mad trances, started to look more and more like a mad woman. Irritated Matsuko decided to lock Benika up. After all, she had other things to think about, like a grand performance on the biggest stage in the country. Soon before the event, Matsuko let Benika out in hopes of receiving a new great song, but what she heard was you may leave now. I've written every song possible. I want to quit. Oh, there was no way that Matsuko would resign from her life as a celebrity. She threw Benika back into her room, however, with no results. Listening to inhuman noises behind a wall, she tried to create a song on her own, yet, in the end, it wasn't good enough. She wasn't good enough. Finally, Matsuko went in the locked room to beg on her knees for help and forgiveness. What answered her was silence, because Benika was already dead. I hope you feel it the same way as I. Mental instability, mansion with secret room, human study, emotional crisis, dense atmosphere, suspense. Here lies a great potential. Will it be buried under panels with crotch hard shots? Let's hope not. And even if this happens, we will still have some art books. And that's my video on mangaka with a great talent. In the end, I ask myself why I actually did this video. Is it to come back to the living after my three month long somberness? Or maybe to distract myself from the oppressive reality. I am not sure, but I don't have to be. We don't need any context for beauty. 